This Raw Vision video is brought to you by Metro Solar, proud partner of the Richmond Football Club. G'day, welcome to Raw Vision, brought to you by Metro Solar, and we continue to speak to the key figures at the club in the wake of the season, and today it is Brendan Gale, the Chief Executive of the club. Thanks for joining us, Benny. Pleasure, Richard. Good to be with you. Mate, the season probably finished off not how you would have liked, I guess, in the end. No, no, definitely not, mate. It's, uh, look, it was a, I thought it was a great achievement from where we were to, to make the finals, something that hadn't been done before in VFL, IFL history. So, but going to the game, I thought we were playing very well. I thought all the important indicators we rely on mm. were all very strong. We didn't hold any fears for the venue. We'd, we'd beaten the opposition six, eight weeks earlier. And, and uh, I don't think any of us saw that result coming. It was a, it was a look, at the end of that, it was a very, very poor performance and, um, and uh, one which will weigh heavily on the boys over summer, I would have thought. Certainly. Well, what about the club uh, off-field this year? Another record year with sponsorship and membership. You've got to be really happy with that. It's another solid year, Richo. And that's, that's been the narrative of the last few years, to sort of build the business in order to support football on a sustainable basis. And, and that's been encouraging. But things sort of quietened down about early June, though, <laughs> um, based on performance. So, um, but then that I also acknowledge, really, most people only really care about the performance on field. And, and, um, and that was certainly disappointing to start the year. And as I said before, we did find a way to get ourselves out of that hole. But, but a, you know, a reasonably solid year off field. I guess the performance on field drives all of this stuff off field, obviously. Does the end of the year and that run of, I guess, 10 wins in a row, does that help the club now moving into the off season? Look, I think what do it, people think about the last result? How does it work? Oh, look, I think, I think it does. Look, look it's, it, it, it's fair to say our performances early in the year were, were very poor and we're well short of expectations. And like anything in life, when you, when you don't meet expectations, people are disappointed. So, look, our, our gate's down about 20%. Our membership was tracking really well, then sort of stopped. Um, but, uh, and you probably expect that. But we did find a way to turn it around and, and Damien and the players. And, uh, and it wasn't just a flash in the pan. I mean, as I said before, that was something that hasn't been done nine games in a row to make the finals. There was something sustainable about it. Um, and, um, you know, I think um, it, it will give everyone a, a great so source of confidence and belief going to next year. And, you know, that should be reflected in the business as well. Yeah, just before we move on, the, the 3-10 and 10 start, you've already said how disappointing it was, but it does have a real impact across the whole business of the footy club? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Um, look, it, it affects the business. Our gates was, was down about 20%, and attendance is obviously down, and, and membership really did stop at around mid-June at about 66,000. We're tracking towards, um, we're tracking towards um, you know, 70,000 for sure. But, but I think you know, for the first time um, under you know, you know, Damien's sort of leadership, people started to question the direction and the, the negative sentiment was, uh, was um, pretty powerful as well. So, um, but you know, we, we believe internally in the people we've got at the club, we believe in the direction we're going. We just had to sort of turn that around. It is important in that situation, you said people were for the first time in a number of years starting to question things a little bit. How important was it just to stick fat and not make any knee jerk sort of reactions off that? Look, it's really important, Richo, because um, you know, it's an important internal and external lesson that, that uh, when, when, you're, uh, when you're being challenged, you're under pressure, um, we don't just pull the roof down on our heads. You know, we, we confront the issues, we, we reflect, we review, we make changes, we have difficult conversations where they need to, yeah. to take place and, and we, we continue to sort of search for improvement and ultimately excellence. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how you do it. And, you know, I thought, um, you know, I thought, you know, first year as president, I thought that President Peggy O'Neill showed, you know, some great leadership and great stability and, and support, and I thought the coach himself. I thought the name was under great pressure. I mean, no, no more. No one's under more pressure than the senior coach. And yeah. He was very purposeful and, and very confident, and very positive in, in in what he was sort of trying to do, and and the players as well, the leadership group. So, you know, it's a it's a terrible about three and ten, but to 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 subject ourselves to that, to find a way to get out of it, mm. and um, salvage a season, I think is a really powerful lesson. You mentioned Peggy there, obviously the leader of the club, the president. And we also had a new head of football in, in Daniel Richardson came on board 
uh, towards the end of last year, but you know it was difficult times for him. How was he during that tough time early in the year? One of, one of Dan's key strengths is his, is his calm and measured approach. I mean, he's been in and around football a long time, um, and uh, so so I think that 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 evenness, that that calm temperament, was was very important. And and clearly, you know, Dan, as the leader of the department, was getting right under the hood of our performance and trying to understand why and. We weren't playing well and, and, and making some changes on the way through and you know, it's probably fair to say there'll, there'll be, you know, you'll continue to make some changes as we're relentless in our commitment to improvement. So um, no, I thought Dan and um, you know, his, his um, even temperament and, 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 and confidence are very important. Great experience for him too. Yeah, you were over in Adelaide obviously for that last game. It was unbelievable driving into that ground. You were just black and yellow in the streets of Adelaide walking into the ground. You've got to be amazed at the support you know, this club continually gets from its supporters? Oh, look, I, I am. And, and to be honest, as soon as the siren went, I was walking back to the bus and I just kept seeing families of, of Tigers packing up their cars, driving back. And that's... Unbelievable. I wasn't like self-pity. That what really affected me the most, yeah, that, yeah. that we, uh, we had so much support and a lot of people had made a lot of sacrifice and effort yeah. and yet, yeah, we barely fired a shot, yeah. to be honest. So... Um, and I remember the, you know, the weeks, the last few weeks leading up to the finals, I, mean, I had a chat with a senior representative, Herald Sun, and just said, is there any chance you can just back, it off, a back it off a little bit? And he said, look, you know, Collingwood's effectively out, and you guys are the story. Yeah, and yeah. Look, we're a, we're a club that attracts a lot of interest, and that, that's a great thing. And, yeah. um, and, um, and we're thankful for it, and, and we're particularly thankful for, for our amazing yeah. you know, members and fans.